Hi, this is Robert with Pioneer Smokehouses, and I wanted to rush this video out because I know that the holiday is next week, and so I thought, why didn't I do this like two, three weeks ago? But, you know, you can only eat so much food, and uh, maybe the leftovers will uh, refrigerate until Thanksgiving. So anyway, what we're doing here is we're going to do a ham on the Traeger. So uh, let's go take a look at how we get that ham ready to go in the Traeger. Okay, so we're in the kitchen here and uh, we're gonna talk about the ham to start with. So this is my ham today and uh, it's just a uh, Cook's ham shank portion. And then what I do is I have the um, store cut the bottom of that portion off. But here's the thing is that because of health code regulations, um, not all stores will do it. And also there's specific times. So this is a pre-cooked item and they're not allowed to cut this on a dirty machine. So what you want to do is you want to either talk to your butcher a couple of days ahead of time and find out when or get them to cut it ahead of time or what I usually do is uh, I spend a lot of time in the stores, so I will come in when the store opens and ask them to cut it before they've cut anything else. Once they start cutting beef, you know, uncooked meat, they can't come back and cut this. Now, if that's not an option, there is one other option that I use, and uh, I'm going to show you this really quick. This is my knife drawer right here, and uh, what I do is I shrink wrap my Sawzall, and then I put this blade in there. I keep this blade in my knife drawer and it's only for using for this. This, um, I think it's a pruning blade of some sort. And uh, yeah, it says wood pruning blade, uh, five TPI, so teeth per inch. And uh, this will cut through ham bone. So is it a mess? Yes. Um, I would almost recommend doing it outside, but it does work. When you do it, you're kind of wanna, you'll cut from the long side. So you'll take your ham upside down like this. So the long side like that, and you'll kind of cut in just a little bit of a dip. That way you'll end up with the flat surface you want. You don't have to cut a lot of it out. You just have to cut enough that it'll sit flat in the pan. I had them cut just a little bit more than I normally would because I thought it would work nice in the video. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and show it to you real quick. And they're really nice at my local store and they uh, cleaned it all up and took all the extra packaging and all the junk off. And then, so like I said, they cut a lot off of that back and I just used that piece for uh, making uh, beans. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna toss it in the pan here. And this is a rather large pan and uh, you'll wanna make sure that you don't burn it. So something that I like to do is I like to take rings from the bottom of jars like this and throw them in there. If you put three of those rings in there or even a round uh, cake sheet, uh, uh, cake cooling tray, that'll keep it off the bottom. So just like that, and now it's not touching the bottom, but three of them will make sure that it doesn't fall off and I'll do that off the camera before I get going. So then what we'll do is we'll put in about a cup of dark brown sugar. I always use dark brown sugar. And we'll be using more of that later. The only time I don't use dark brown sugar is like if it's specifically called for in a recipe or, um, well, if it's specifically called for in a recipe, a lot of times that'll be like in cookie recipes. But other than that, I don't see any reason not to. Um, so in here we have about eight ounces of honey. I'm going to use about four of it. So half a cup and, uh, I'm just trying to get some flavor in here and the other half a cup I will use for the, um, for the, uh, cooking process. Now cloves, some people are love them, hate them, but I feel that the combination of the flavors that we're going for including the fact that ham is just a good flavor with clove is a good thing to do. So what I'll do is I'll pour out a handful of them in, out here and then I'm going to pick out four or five of the best ones for this size of ham. I don't want small little cloves in there because they'll be hard to remove 
um, and I want to get them out of there because if you bite one of these when you're eating your ham, you're not going to be too happy. It just They'll just be bitter and gross. So those little chunk pieces, I just throw them away. I don't save them for anything. And then um, in a minute, we'll come back to the uh, pineapple juice. So I'm going to fill this with water and then just to cover the ham. And then I'm going to put it on to boil on high for a while. So we'll come back to that in a few minutes. All right, so we're back again. So it's just been a little bit over an hour now. It uh, boiled in there for about 45 minutes. It took the hot water about five minutes to come up to temperature, boiled on 20 minutes, and then I flipped it over and boiled on the other 20. So if you look here, you'll see the water is covering the top of it, but not sufficiently. Now, the main reason that I boil this is to reduce the amount of uh, salt in the ham and also to get some of the oil off of it. So now what I'm going to do, and I'm going to pop out of the camera here, is I'm just going to come around and I'm going to remove a little bit of the fat. Now you don't have to do this if you want to uh, put it in your uh, in your grill or you know this recipe is also good for an oven by the way I, I don't want to miss on that. So I'm just going to remove those pieces of fat. Um, if you remove these beforehand you could actually uh, deep fry them and make yourself some uh, pork rinds or cracklins. And so I mean, look at that fat right there is, is just something you just don't even want to bother with. We just want to get that off of there. Not going to be able to eat it. You'll just end up peeling it off later. So why not just get it out of there now and then we can get a little bit of cooking. Remember that this is a completely cooked product ahead of time. Um, while I, I think it adds a lot to cooking it, it's completely edible. So I'm going to just show you here and... Uh, so this is just a little piece off the side that I cut when I cut into the fat that it got a little too deep. Um, so it's still pretty um, tight. It's not like the grains of the meat are not loose, but completely edible. Oh, and tasty too. It has a real, um, just a regular ham flavor, you know, a little bit of uh, the preparation smoke, but nothing added to it at this point. You know, we put a little bit of that stuff in there just to get a little bit of the flavor in ahead of time. But I'll be honest that even putting that in there, it doesn't add that much to it. So come around and trim the edges. And I trimmed a little bit of meat there that I didn't plan on, but that's okay. It's good to eat. So now I'm going to move over here. Standard foil pan. I don't like to put my regular pans in the um, smokers. So what I like to do is I like to keep an assortment of foil pans for whatever I'm doing. If I end up in a situation to where I have to, I'll try to use like an old cake pan or something. But everything is hard to clean once it gets in there. So on the bottom of this, there's a bone that sticks out. That's where they cut it flat. Well, that bone is going to push down. And it's going to keep it from sitting flat. So my solution for that is... I buy this large can of pineapple and I don't really need all these pineapple rings and I'll show you why in a second. So I have a few extras um, and I usually just, when I make this, I usually just sit down and eat a few. But what I also do is I will take these rings and I will set three of them down here just like this. But let's just show you like that. So now you've got the three pineapple rings and you want just enough space between them that that bone will fit in between there. And then you just go ahead and take this and set it down and center it out as much as you can. And then those pineapple rings will help keep it level. And that's why we wanted the bottom level in the first place. But as it cooks, the meat starts to tighten and then the bones come more exposed, just like a rack of ribs would do. So now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a light string of honey around there. So this is a half a cup of honey and we're going to use it all. But we're just kind of sprinkling on there. And if you want to paint it on there, feel free. Then this is a cup of brown sugar.
Now, if you want to make a gravy or something like that, I wouldn't use any of this stuff. If that's the case, what I would do is I would either use vegetable stock, uh, which is my preferred low sodium vegetable stock, buy a box of it in your store, or I would use um, chicken stock or chicken broth. And uh, another thing you could do is you could uh, use your some leftover liquid from making ham and beans. It would probably work just fine. But you don't want a sweet to go with your ham if you're going to make a gravy. Now what I do is I reduce what's left over for a glaze. So I took and spread the brown sugar and the honey out on the bottom to get a layer to cover that. Now I'm taking rings of pineapple around the outside. The goal is, is to cover the whole surface with some pineapple. I used to do a lot with putting um, maraschino cherries on there, but nobody was eating them. And the maraschino, maraschino cherries are kind of expensive. It's not like the pineapple here, which gives you such a, a flavor boost. Now, the main reason I could get by with a small can of this and just put pineapple on the outside edges, but I want all this juice in there. So I'm going to pour this juice in there like that. Get it all in there, and it's because I use those three on the bottom, it's going to save me one ring for a snack, which is always good. Now, I'm going to go with more brown sugar on the top here. And because this ham is not really that big, we don't have to use all this brown sugar, but use what you're comfortable with. I like to use a lot of it. And remember, it's going to go into the basting liquid, too, because we've got pineapple down there. But uh, what's going to happen is, is that this is going to run down in there and mix with it. Okay, let's get a little bit more of that off. And then what we're going to do is we're going to open this and we're going to use all this. So same thing. We're going to swirl it around the outside edges here. And then we're just going to kind of fill it in. And like I said, if you want to use a basting brush, go ahead and paint it on there. Now, if I were doing maraschino cherries, before I put this on there, I just would have put one in each one. And if I wanted extra clove, I wanted more in there, I would have used a bamboo skewer in the middle and put a clove in the middle of each so that way they were directly underneath the cherries so that way it would be easy for me to remove them. Um, but like I said, some people are not fans of cloves, so if you go on the lighter side, you probably won't be disappointed. So that's all of the um, honey. So um, I'm going to go ahead and run this out to my preheated grill and we'll go from there. So we'll see you outside. Okay, so here we are outside at the pellet smoker. And uh, again, this is a Traeger uh, 20 size, which is the same as the tail tailgater, but this is not the tailgater model because it has the fixed legs. Um, I just went ahead and put that in there and uh, it's completely preheated, but when you open up the door, the temperature drops like a rock. So I'm gonna go ahead and close it again, but you can see I set it in there. Remember that these tinfoil trays are really weak. So what you might wanna do is either use a uh, no lip cookie sheet or the back of a sheet pan to slide it in, just like I do with everything else. I didn't use any tinfoil today. Um, after I cleaned it the last time, I just put it back together and did the sh uh, shots. And um, I also don't have the uh, drip pan in. Um, and the reason that I don't have, or the drip can, I'm sorry. And I could go ahead and put it on there, but I don't really need to because we're outside here and it's just gonna go on the ground. If you're cooking it on your deck or your driveway or patio, anywhere where you wanna keep it clean, you definitely don't wanna forget this because even the smoke will drip out a little bit. But if I don't have to clean it, one more thing, that's fine with me. So every time I close the lid on the smoker, I always check the pellets. And when I check the pellets, I make sure it has enough until the next time I plan on checking it, I wanna have enough, like if I'm gonna check it an hour, I want there to be two hours worth. And then when I do it, I kind of move them together into a little mountain so they're directly over top of the auger. So most of them will suck down in there without having to rearrange it. So there's plenty in there for this time. Um, but if I needed to add some, I'm using uh, Traeger Hickory today and there's no, so I'm not using 
normally I would pick my wood to match my meat more. Uh, but because this is already pre-smoked and cured, uh, I want to go with something that's going to complement that smoke and not like compete with it. And I think that they would have used a hickory or an oak or something like that. Um, but also, I don't want to fight with the flavoring that I'm trying to add because I'm putting in pineapple, honey, and brown sugar. I want that to be the star of the show. I don't want the smoke to overpower it. I wouldn't cook this on something like an electric smoker. Um, an electric smoker, what it'll do is it'll probably add too much smoke to it. But don't be scared if you want to do that. First thing you'll have to do is add more cooking time because most electric smokers will not get up to 325. And second thing is, is that you want to go really light on the smoke chips. So put in a little bit at the beginning and then add a little bit at the middle, but don't go crazy. Let it just cook with the temperature and the seasoning of the smoker. As long as your smoker is well seasoned, you'll still get a smoky flavor. It just won't be overbearing and overpower your food. All right. So we'll come back and check on this in about an hour. This is about a three hour process at 325. Um, if it looks like it's cooking too fast, we can lower the pro uh, temperature down a little bit. Um, but what I have noticed is that this controller tends to run it a little lower than whatever I set it on. So if I set it on, this is one of the new controllers. If I set it on 325, it'll actually run about 315. So um, I will see you in a few minutes and we'll go from there. All right, so we're just gonna uh, base this really quick and I did check on it about an hour ago. So this is the two hour mark right here or just a little under two hours, I'm sorry. And it's looking really good. The liquid is definitely hot, so you can tell it's, it's cooking along. It looks like it's a little lower in temperature than what I was planning. And because I'm not in any hurry, which is a good thing, I'm not really going to worry about kicking up the temperature. Remember, this is fully cooked. So all I'm trying to do is get it to break down a little bit and take on the flavors that I've added. So I'm not really going to worry about picturing right now, but I just wanted to, to show you that I'm just basically basting it with the uh, turkey baster. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it like that because there's two hours until dinner time. So if it needs to cook for four hours instead, that's fine. Um, I don't know if you can see the temperature down here, um, but when I came out, it was right around 300. And uh, one of the problems that we're having is it's really kind of getting cold out here with the creek and everything. It stays really chilly up in here pretty much even on a sunny day. So I'll see you in a few minutes for you, but it'll be at least an hour for me. All right, so it's starting to get dark out here. So let's go ahead and uh, finish up this video real quick. So I'll go ahead and open it up. I did uh, have to rotate it around a little bit and uh, we'll... Uh, get a picture here for you real quick oh yeah that picture is gonna work just great without the flash and uh, so that picture is up here right now and then uh, when I cut it on the inside I'll go ahead and put another picture up here from uh, dinner time uh, but I'm going to uh, cut a piece off of this right now It is pretty warm. I'm going to go ahead and close that down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the temperature down to the smokes. Well, let's lower it down to the 180 setting. So we're just going to uh, lower the temperature. I'm going to leave it out here for another 30 minutes while I get the rest of my dinner ready. But it will be perfectly fine in there because it's not going to be a problem to overcook a little bit. Um, let's see if we can, uh, if we still have enough light. Oh yeah, we got just enough light for you to see that. So you can see the backside is nice and colored up just like you would with any smoker. Um, the edges are just a little crispy. I had to rotate it around like I just mentioned there, um, but the inside is nice and soft. And uh, you can see that's what I was going for. So it just comes apart like that without the knife. And then 
I like the crispy edges actually. So it has all that authentic ham taste, but then all those other tastes all came together really well. Um, this is a recipe you can make in your oven. So if you don't have a smoker, don't feel bad. But if you have a, a smoker that puts out a little bit more smoke than a pellet smoker, that'll also work really well too. I would think, and I have not done this in the Masterbuilt Gravity Series smokers, but I would think this recipe would be just absolutely amazing in that. Um, so thank you for watching. My affiliate links are below for some of the products I used in the video, including the Traeger and also the Traeger Review article. Um, if you do use those affiliate links, I will get compensated, so I appreciate it. Thanks. Have a great day.